going on with my. <laughs> okay, uh, hello and welcome everybody. Um, sorry about the late start. Um, I am Professor Joseph Brown, the Graduate Program Director of the Master of Arts in International Relations here at UMass Boston. Um, also here with us is uh, Jason, who is going to be um, helping out with the slideshow portion of things. Um, we are going to be tag teaming this and it is going to work great. Um, so uh, Jason, if you've got the slides up, um, if you could move it to the, the introductions and I'll just sort of read off the headings uh, as we go and that way you'll know which uh, slide to be on. But um, um, first I want to give some contact information, uh, both for myself as the graduate program director um, joseph.brown at umb.edu uh, for any questions you might have about the program. And also Lee Murphy, uh, who is not joining us today, but who will be another contact person for you uh, as the program administrator in the Department of Conflict Resolution, uh, Human Security and Global Governance. Um, so I'm gonna move on to um, the first topic. What is the Master of Arts in International Relations here at UMass Boston? The mayor, as we like to call it, is a two-year Master of Arts degree covering all aspects of the international relations field. Um, you can apply as a, a regular applicant for the two-year program, or if you're currently a UMass Boston undergraduate, uh, we also offer an accelerated master's program, otherwise known as a four plus one, which allows you to earn the Master of Arts in International Relations in just about one additional year of study after completing the requirements of your Bachelor of Arts at UMB. Um, in the program, whether you're a traditional applicant or uh, an accelerated master's applicant, you can expect to develop your understanding of international organizations, negotiation and conflict resolution skills, international development and political economy, especially in the global south, um, and a topic that's near and dear to me, international environmental politics. The courses that you take will consider these issues from theoretical and applied perspectives, which you might also think of as academic perspectives and policy perspectives. There's a whole variety of graduate programs at UMass Boston, and I'll just mention a few here because they are in cognate disciplines and the Master of Arts program um, in international relations sometimes draws on the resources of these other great programs at UMass Boston. So in addition to your international relations MA program, there are both MA and PhD programs in global governance and human security, a Master of Arts in conflict resolution, certificate programs in gender leadership and public policy, um, and then PhD programs in things like gerontology, uh, masters of public administrations, PhDs of public policy. The reason I mention all of these is that your master of arts program in international relations has elective courses and you can choose to take classes in these other programs if they're relevant to your, your career interests or academic interests in the international relations field. Um, so I'd like to move on now to what makes this mayor program unique. Um, one of the best selling points, I think, of the mayor is that it's offered jointly by two departments at UMass Boston. One is the Department of Political Science, which is in the College of Liberal Arts, and the other is the Department of Conflict Resolution, Human Security, and Global Governance in the McCormick Graduate School. What does it mean to have a program that's jointly hosted by two departments? Well, um, you get twice the faculty and twice the faculty expertise in diverse areas. So. Um, the conflict resolution department has experts on global governance, peace and conflict studies, negotiation. The political science department might have experts on political economy, poverty and hunger alleviation, foreign policy analysis. Um, with such a large group of faculty and diverse faculty expertise, we're able to offer not only great core classes, but really interesting electives. Uh, and then things like summer programs. If you wanna travel and study conflict resolution in Northern Ireland, for instance, we have a great summer program that you count, can count toward your elective credits. Um, also keeping in the theme of diverse faculty expertise, the program is both theoretically oriented and applied oriented. So it positions you as a graduate for a variety of career paths, including government positions, non-governmental organizations, policy think tanks, as well as, if you choose, uh, potentially doing a PhD program in international relations or a related field after, your, after you earn your MA degree here. Um, we also bring in a very diverse and international student population, both within the program and in UMass Boston at large. And Boston is the world's largest university town. We have more universities here per capita than any place in the world. 
Um, and you can draw on the resources of the other great colleges and universities in Boston to enrich your living experience and your academic experience while you're here studying with us. So I'm gonna move on now to the curriculum of the Master of Arts program. As I mentioned, it has both core classes and elective classes. Um, the six core classes of the degree cover such topics as theory and concepts in international relations, contemporary issues in international politics, international political economy, research methods, international development, and global governance. In addition to those core subjects that everybody takes in their, their six core sequence, you can choose for elective classes to round out your degree uh, and make it applicable to your own particular interests because international relations is a huge field. So uh, you might like elective classes from the conflict resolution program or the political science program, or you might be really interested to round out your understanding of economics and then you would take a class in the economics department, or you might be interested in international history and you might find a class in the history department. You can also take classes at other universities in the Boston area. Um, we can work that out with them. Uh, for instance, if there's a class you really wanna take at Northeastern or BU or at the Fletcher School at Tufts University across town, um, we can work out arrangements where you can take a class there and count it toward your degree here at UMass Boston as one of those four electives. Finally, um, everybody finishes their degree with either a capstone course or a master's thesis. The typical requirement uh, or the typical way that people satisfy the requirement is by taking the capstone class, which operates a bit like a PhD graduate colloquium. Uh, you meet with a, a small group of your, your fellow students who are in their second year uh, with a faculty member. You discuss issues of research and you discuss the research that you're doing because you're working toward a semester paper, 25, 30 pages long, of your own original scholarly research on a topic that interests you a lot personally. Um, if you are interested in further graduate study, like doing a PhD, you might choose instead to do the master's thesis, which is a much larger piece of research. Um, you'd be writing something like 75 or 80 pages on a specific topic, and you really focus really uh, uh, intently on one particular thing that interests you a whole bunch that you want to spend 75 or 80 pages writing about. You work with one faculty member as your primary advisor. Uh, a second faculty member as the, the second member of your thesis committee. You defend a proposal for, re for the research you're going to do over the course of the year. Uh, and then at the end of the year, you defend the thesis uh, with an extra faculty member there as a, as a reader. So you've got a committee of three by the end. Um, and you produce by the end of it um, a, a solid original piece of scholarly research. And I think it's a really great uh, test for whether you want to do a PhD, because as a PhD, you're, you're basically writing a, a book, so something that's like three or four times the length of your master's thesis. Um, and you might be interested in, in some career that is research oriented, like consulting, uh, and you have this, this deep and abiding interest in a particular topic, and you want to get your, uh, um, your research chops in good order for your future consulting career. So that, that might be another reason to do a to do the thesis, but most people choose to do the, the capstone class, which is a really great way to finish out your degree. Uh, I'm gonna move on now uh, to post mayor careers. Um, because the program we have here, the mayor program is so, so flexible and draws on such a diverse pool of faculty expertise, students are able to pursue a variety of career paths upon earning their degree. So we often place people uh, in jobs in international organizations and non-governmental organizations. Graduates have gone on to jobs at the United Nations. They've also founded their own NGOs. A few years ago, we had a student found an NGO uh, in, in Rwanda called the Kigali Reading Center. We've had students take jobs with government agencies. Um, a student went on to work at the Swiss Department of Foreign Affairs, the Kuwaiti Mission to the United Nations. I've also had students uh, take jobs with the US Congress and the various uh, working for the various subcommittees or like the Congressional Research Service. Uh, I've had students go on to get jobs at the Department of Homeland Security or working for private contractors that do consulting work for US government agencies. Um, students also get jobs in the private sector, international consulting, journalism. Uh, students have gone on to legal careers, going back to their home countries like Nigeria and becoming uh, lawyers or barristers in their, their home countries. 
Um, and then some students go and pursue PhDs afterwards. Um, they, they take on careers in academic administration as well. Um, we've had students go on to, um, I guess you'd say sort of academic jobs, but not necessarily getting a PhD. That's another option too. Um, the student experience at UMass Boston um, is the next uh, topic I'd like to cover. Um, UMass Boston is ranked um, as one of the top universities in the world. Uh, we pull in a highly diverse and international student body. Um, the US government recognizes UMass Boston as a majority minority university, uh, which is a pretty special thing. And looking at the MAIR program in particular, every cohort coming in, so like usually 15 or so students, is a microcosm of the world. They're from countries uh, on, on different continents even. And um, I think that's a real benefit to you, particularly if you're studying international relations, because a lot of the time you're learning from faculty in your classes, but you're also learning from your fellow students. And I think I, I, in my own graduate school experience, a lot of the most valuable things that I learned or from conversations I have with other students after class. Um, so I think that's a really uh, important value added of this program, bringing in so many students from countries around the world. And as I mentioned, Boston is the, is the world's largest university town. Um, I like to get on mailing lists for other universities for the talks that are happening. Um, and so you might do this as well. And you might see a talk coming up at Harvard, an open talk at the Kennedy School. You can sign up and go to that. A talk happening at BU, which has a, uh, a school of international public policy. They get guest speakers. There's the Fletcher School at Tufts. They pull in guest speakers. We have guest speakers here. And so you, you get to take advantage of the resources of all these different universities, uh, visit their libraries, uh, go catch lectures there, um, and really broaden out your academic experience um, <clears throat> in, your, uh, in your career here at UMass Boston. A lot of people are interested in financial support because master's degrees are expensive. Um, that's the next topic I'd like to cover. We offer a number of fellowships and scholarships every year. These are offered competitively based on your academic potential. So it's important to put together the best application you can and get your application in by the March 15th deadline for full consideration for these various forms of financial aid. Um, Typically, uh, people getting financial aid work as research assistants or teaching assistants for faculty, usually in the political science or conflict resolution departments. I try to place people with faculty who are teaching a class or doing a research project that's of interest to the graduate student um, so that the work is engaging to you. Um, there are two of these that we give per year to the incoming class. So as I mentioned, they are awarded competitively. We usually bring in about 12 to 15 students per year. We have two of these graduate assistantships, so it's quite competitive. You want to make sure you get the best recommendation letters you possibly can, write the strongest essay you can to maximize your chance of, of getting one of these fellowships. Um, there's a more specialized fellowship. It's called the Langley Award, um, and this was endowed by, a, by a, an individual donor who wanted to create a scholarship program for people who are first generation college students. So you're the first person in your family to get a college degree and then go on to graduate study. Um, that's one of the categories of people we consider for this award. Uh, the other people we consider are uh, US military veterans or graduates of UMass Boston with the UMass Boston BA. So if you, fill, if you fall into any of those three categories, we consider you for the Langley Award. It's a, it's a good pool of money to support you in your first year uh, of the mayor program. In addition to that, we have um, a small pool of additional scholarship funds. Usually it comes out to two $1,000 scholarships in your first semester to help you cover things like moving expenses and books. Um, so that's another form of aid we have available. Um, I just wanna reiterate to get considered for these things, you wanna have your application in by the March 15th deadline because that's when we start looking at people's files to see who's going to, um, who's gonna get the, uh, the financial aid. We have additional grants as well to cover things like conference participation if you're going to a conference to present your research there. <laughs> so now I'm going to cover the, uh, the components of your admissions package as you're, um, as you're applying to the mayor. So as I mentioned, the deadline for full consideration for, for financial aid is March 15th, but we do accept applications thereafter on a rolling basis until June 1st. Um, there's the application form that you need to submit in addition to the application fee. We also ask for your official transcripts to be sent to us. So not scans, um, 
either the original paper document needs to be set in, sent in by mail, or what is usually easier is to have your university transmit an official electronic copy to us through the, the grad CAS application system. And those things need to come in by March 15th to get full consideration for financial aid. In addition, uh, if you're an international applicant, um, we usually need an English proficiency test result from you. There are some exemptions by country. Uh, so if you've got a Bachelor of Arts or equivalent degree uh, from a country where the primary language of, of instruction is English for everything, so Australia, Ghana, uh, Grenada, uh, Canada, the UK, um, there's a whole list on the UMass Boston website uh, for international graduate applicants. Uh, listing the exempt countries, but for most other countries in the world, we need a, an English proficiency test result. It could be the TOEFL test, uh, the IELTS test, or the Duolingo test, which I think is the most affordable, and we're able to accept that now. Um, we ask for your resume or curriculum vitae, two letters of recommendation, ideally from professors you've studied, studied with. We want letters that speak to your academic potential, uh, your abilities for critical thought, analytical writing, etc. We can take letters from other people, like the, the supervisors you've worked under at your job, but we're trying to get an assessment of your academic potential, so we prefer to get letters from professors who have taught you in the past. We ask for a writing sample now. This should be your own original writing. It should not be co-authored. It should, should be uh, written by just you. I recommend sending in something of five to ten pages or, or so showing us your uh, ability to express your thoughts in writing and also the quality of your analytical skills. Um, most importantly though, um, the letters of interest and intent. We ask you for a personal statement. Um, I recommend putting uh, like 300 words or so at the front of it, describing yourself. Um, here's me, here's my background. Um, and then get into your interests and your goals. So why are you interested in pursuing the Master of Arts in International Relations at UMass Boston? Um, we wanna know the, the depth of your interest and that you're gonna come here and focus and, and, and succeed in your studies and persevere through the program uh, and, and graduate with your degree. And we're interested to know what you're planning to do next. Um, why do you want this degree? What kind of job are you looking at or what are your academic goals for the future? Um, and I think the, the, the final slide now I'd like to show is just contact information again. Um, please connect with us. Yeah, my email address is joseph.brown at umb.edu. Uh, Lee Murphy's address is lee.murphy at umb.edu. I would suggest using me as your primary contact person because I am the graduate program director. Um, and if it's more of an administrative specific question or questions about the mechanics of the application, uh, sometimes I'll bounce those over to, to Lee because she's really good at helping with those things. Um, you can contact me by email. Um, if you are interested to know what the experience is like for current students, for instance, if you're an international student and you have questions about relocating to Boston, I could put you in touch with a current student in the program, um, whether you're looking to talk to an interna international student or uh, maybe you're in the military reserves and you want to talk to a current student who's also in the reserves about what that's like, kind of balancing your master's uh, studies with your, your military reserves, um, I'm happy to put you in touch with students who have those experiences as well. You can come and observe a class. If you wanna visit UMass Boston and sit in, you can sit in on a class. Um, if you're in, in, the, uh, uh, if you're in the, the Zoom meeting right now, you're not sure whether you'll be applying on this cycle necessarily, but you're interested in the program for the future, you can try it out by taking a class in the fall as a non-degree student. Um, and that way you'll get the experience of what it's like to study at UMass Boston. Um, even though maybe you weren't starting the program for this coming fall, you're thinking about it in the future. Taking a class is a good way to know whether the, the, the full two-year master's is, is good for you. 